children welcome to your english classes please like the video if you enjoy it let's get started today we'll read chapter number 3 of the oxford new pathways literature reader 5 anansi and the snake anansi was a large hairy long-legged spider who lived in the forest all animals despised him because he was a trickster he wasn't strong like elephant or brave like lion he wasn't beautiful like gazelle or fierce like tiger he couldn't run like deer sing like bird buzz like bee or swim like fish but anansi was smart anansi was determined that all the other animals should recognize his greatness so he tried getting into their good books he would bring presents to tiger and play with his children praise peacock for his tail feathers oroks for his horns but it didn't work they still despised him he was still just an anansi small black and hairy anansi had to do something to make the animals respect him He knew that all of them were afraid of snake. Dog and rabbit fled from snake in terror, and even elephant turned aside if he saw a snake hanging from a branch in his way. One day, all the animals were gathered together, as was the custom, boasting of one another, telling each other of their beauty and strength. When it was Anansi's turn, he climbed up a tree trunk and shouted, "I am the most beautiful. I am the strongest of all." Hyena laughed and donkey brayed, and the monkeys jumped up and down, screeching and howling in amusement. All the animals laughed. "What can you do, Anansi?" asked Tiger. to prove that you are the strongest i will capture snake boasted anansi all the animals laughed again anansi said the tiger if you capture snake we will agree that you are the strongest what is more we will make you the storyteller and all the animal stories will be called anansi stories All right, said Anansi. I'll do it. Easier said than done. Anansi had bitten off more than he could chew. Boasting was one thing, but capturing snake was another. Still, he had accepted the challenge, so he had better think of something smart. Anansi went deep into the forest where the trees grew tall. A long vines hung from their branches. He cut a length of vine and tied one end into a noose. Then he spread out the noose on the path in front of Snake's house and put some berries in the middle of it. Then holding on to the other end of the vine, he hid behind a tree and waited. Soon Snake came. slithering and sliding down the path he stopped when he saw the berries and put his head right into the noose to eat them and nancy yanked his end of the vine and snake reared up as the noose closed on him and nancy was pulled out from behind the tree and right across the path into a prickly bush He let go of the vine and snake slithered away. The next morning, Anansi was back in front of Snake's house. This time, he had a spade and he was digging a hole in Snake's path. When the hole was dug, Anansi smeared its side with grease. Then he covered it up with dry palm leaves and scattered dirt on them so that it looked perfectly natural then he sat down behind the tree and waited soon snake came slithering and sliding down the path 
He saw the dusty palm leaves in his way and tapped them lightly with his head. Down they fell into a greasy pit. Snake carried on. He was so long that he just made a bridge of himself with his head on one side of the pit and his tail on the other and he slithered away. Next morning, Nancy went to the river and cut a long bamboo pole, longer than snake. He dragged the pole up the pathway to Snake's house. The snake looked out to see what Nancy was doing. Morning, Nancy, said the snake. Good morning, Mr. Snake. And Nancy, said Snake, I'm beginning to get vexed. One day you make a nose for me. Another day you dig a greasy pit. Why don't you leave me alone? Well, said Nancy, I so admire you, Mr. Snake, so respect you. Is that so? said the snake. Then what is the meaning of the grease pit and the noose? I made a bet, confessed Nancy. A bet? What kind of bet? I had a bet with Tiger that you were the longest animal in the forest. Of course, said the snake. Some don't believe it. Some say crocodile is longer. Some say giraffe snake alone is longer than your whole body. Snake was really vexed now. Listen to me, Nancy, he said. Why didn't you tell me all this before? I had to capture you, said Nancy, to measure you. That's all you want to do, measure me. That is so. Snake stared at Nancy out of his cold black eyes. If you are lying to me, Nancy, you are dead. Nancy looked back at Snake and never blinked. Nancy, the spider, was a great liar. All right, said Snake. Measure me against the bamboo pole. So Snake lay straight along the pathway and Nancy put the long bamboo pole beside her. Nancy walked up and down, pushing and nudging so the snake and the pole lay exactly side by side, touching. Then he walked up to the snake's head again. This won't work, Nancy said. Because of your tail is at one end and I mark it. By the time I walk up to your head, you can move up. So you will seem even longer and I can't get a true measurement. Then tie my tail, said the snake. Tie my tail to that end. So Nancy took a strong rope and tied snake's tail to one end of the bamboo pole. Then he walked back to snake's head. Your tail will hold fast, asked Nancy. Yes. Now stretch out, said Nancy. Stretch out as long as you can and we will see how far your nose can reach. Snake stretched and stretched and Nancy waited until Snake's eyes were closed from stretching. Then quick as a flash, he tied Snake's head to the pole as well. Then he ran to the middle and put in another tie and another and scrambled up and down tying snake to the pole until he couldn't move an inch. Snake was captured. The word spread through the forest like fire. The monkey told parrot and parrot told deer and all gathered to see snake tied to the bamboo pole. And as he boasted away, I am great. From now on, I am the storyteller and all the animal stories are Anansi stories, an African folktale. Thank you.